Oh, seriously? Hey you guys, 6 Plus Stevo here with another video for you. Um, in this video, it's a bit of an update to my last one really. Because um, in my last video, I spoke about my love of Warhammer 40k 8th edition and why I love it so much. And it sort of uh, became a sort of half and half of me spouting out my gushing love for 8th edition and my disdain for 7th edition um, and all the reasons why with the rule changes etc um, if you want to watch that video by all means please go and watch that video um, there'll be a link popping on the screen about now and also at the end of this video there'll be a link um, please go and watch that video and let me know your thoughts whether you agree or disagree um, but through that video, listing off many, many reasons why I like the rules changes in 8th edition and why I think they've made the game better. Um, I uploaded that and that was fine, but once I uploaded it, um, I realised that I'd missed out one of my absolute favourite rule changes in 8th edition, and I was kicking myself, um, because it is probably one of the best changes in 8th edition. And that is the changes to deep striking. Oh my god. The, the, the new rules for deep striking are just bliss. They're, they're just amazing. I, I, I just can't sing their praises high enough. Deep striking in 8th edition is just awesome. For one reason. It works. It works every time. There is no risk to it. There is no... Um, danger to doing it. I mean, there's obviously danger if you deep strike in the wrong location and then, you know, you make a tactical error in that sense. But if you want to bring something on by teleporting or coming up from the ground or however your army works, however that unit works, you can do it safe in the knowledge that you just choose where they want to go. And as long as you follow the rules and they're no more than nine inches away from the enemy, etc., that's fine. You just put them there. They're where you want them to go, and off you go and carry on playing the game. It is amazing. Um, now, new players are probably wondering why I'm so excited by this. Um, veteran players and players of older editions will know the horrors of the deep strike mishaps. Oh, my God. Um, I had some terrible situations with this going back in older editions. Um, I remember... One time, um, I used to play Necrons. Um, I had a big Necron army, and the centerpiece of my Necron army was my monolith. Um, it was my pride and joy. I loved that thing. Um, it's an expensive model, 250 points. And the monolith could deep strike, um, as I think it still can now. Um, but the deep strike rules back then were very different. Um, you had to roll a scatter dice and 2d6. And uh, if you didn't roll a hit on the scatter dice, well, if you did roll a hit, you you it landed where you wanted it to land, and that was fine, no no dramas. If you rolled the scatter dice in a direction, you had to basically get the uh, distance of the two d six in the direction that the scatter dice indicated, and it would scatter in that direction and land there instead. All fine. However, if it landed from that scatter on a piece of impassable terrain or a building or something like that, um, the unit was destroyed. Nothing you could do about it. No armor saves, no second chances, no re-rolls back then. Um, you couldn't use any stratagems or anything. It was just gone. You lost it um, through, they said, perils in the warp coming through or maybe unit tunneling underground, the ground's caved in, or maybe they just got the wrong coordinates and didn't make it. But for game purposes, it counted as destroyed. Um, now, this happened to me in a game once, about 1,500 points. I've got my master plan in place. I've got my monolith in reserve, ready to come in with a big unit of Necron warriors. I can't remember. It's a long time ago now how many there were. 10 to 15 warriors about to come out the uh, portal at the front of this monolith. Now, Necrons back then cost 18 points a model, so... You know, bare minimum, a minimum squad of 10 was 180 points. plus 250 points for the monolith. I 
tried to deep strike the monolith with the plan of on the following turn the Necrons popping out of the portal and doing what they do best, shooting stuff up and killing stuff and getting back up from the dead. However, I did not roll a hit with the scatter dice and it scattered a good 11 or 12 inches in one direction um, and promptly landed itself on top of a building or a mountain or something else and was instantly destroyed and the unit of warriors with it um, and within one bad dice roll I had lost almost a third of my army um, and needless to say went on to lose the game and that was the wasn't the only time that happened to me there was a couple more games where I do sort of have horrible memories of my monolith deep striking in and uh, blowing itself up on some terrain or something now I can't imagine anyone out there misses the old deep strike rules. Um, it, it again, um, going back to what I spoke to in the last video, there's nothing fun about that. There is absolutely nothing fun about that, um, and not just for you, but I would also say for your opponent. Now, if I was on the other side and I'm fighting the Necrons and their monolith's about to deep strike, and it comes in, and the guy rolls badly on the mishap table thing, and it lands on a building and blows itself up, and then I win the game easy from that point on. I'm not going to leave that game taking away any great feeling of victory, because I want to kill that monolith. I don't want to win the game because of some crappy rule and my opponent has just had some horrendous bad luck and just lost a third of his army because of one bad dice roll and a stupid, stupid rule. Um, I, I, I can't imagine anyone would want to win a game like that. Uh, maybe some people do. They win at any cost. They don't care how they win. But if I win a game, I want to win through my tactical brilliance and my skill as a general on the table. I do not want to win because a third of my opponent's army has been destroyed through a crappy rule. Um, but I'm ranting again, I'm ranting again. It's just, sorry, painful memories there, painful memories. But going forward, never again will we suffer that crap. Um, because the new rules in 8th edition, with units coming in, whether they come in from a board edge or behind enemy lines or anywhere on the table, they are brilliant. It just takes out such a crap rule um, that that sucked fun out of the game and made it frustrating for people. Um, in the old days, if you were playing like a, a densely packed board, like a um, city fight with lots of buildings and stuff, God, forget Deep Strike. I wouldn't even risk it. Good grief, no. Um, but now, it doesn't matter. You, you If you can get them in the area, you can Deep Strike. Um, and that is brilliant. Um, I love it. And long may we never return to those dark days of the older edition deep strike rules. Um, I think for everyone out there, virtually every army's got access to units that can deep strike or have some similar ability like that. And for all of us, it's a great thing that we're not losing units to crap rules like that anymore. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, as you can see in the picture showing, we've got a drop pod there that's just landed. Uh, Sisters of Battle there just piled out. Um, I'm sure uh, Feminist 40k will be loving that picture. But, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, guys, um, thanks again for watching. Just really wanted to do a quick video here. I've put no planning into this. I'm probably mumbling quite a bit. But uh, on the last one, I was just kicking myself and I just had to get in there. Just yet another reason to love 8th edition. Um, there's so much good stuff to say about 8th edition. I've seen a few videos of people bad mouthing it and slating it. And that's fine. Every, we're all entitled to our own opinion. Some, I'm sure there's people out there that still play the older editions and don't enjoy 8th. And, and that's fine. But uh, for me personally and the vast majority of players out there, I think we're all loving 8th edition and some of the new goodness it's brought into the game. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to stop rambling on now. Thanks again for watching. Um, for any of you out there that are subscribers and, and people that are supporting this channel, um, huge thank you to you. It means so much. Um, it's, it's only been going about a week and a half now, um, but I'm absolutely loving it. 
the support has been amazing. Um, I have to say a huge thank you to Idik Beer for um, for helping me um, promote the channel. Um, he checked out the channel and uh, shared it on his Facebook group, um, which is a group that supports wargaming YouTubers um, and the community as a whole. Um, the guy's done fantastic work for the community and makes a great channel of his own. Um, I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description below. For anyone who hasn't checked out his channel, um, it's fantastic, a great channel. Um, and he's one of the people that's been an inspiration to me to get started making my own channels and content and videos about this hobby that we all love. Um, can't say enough good things about the guy. Um, so if you haven't already, please check out his channel. It's uh, brilliant stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, mate, for all your support. It really does mean a lot. Um, but anyway, guys, I've waffled on long enough now. Um, I'll see you on the next one. And this is 6 Plus Stevo signing out.